Welcome to the class. Today the topic is Judiciary of India. Indian Judiciary Service over via formerly known as Federal Judiciary found at Mayor's Court, Madras, 1726, Country India. Training Institute. 1. National Judicial Academy, Bhopal, 2. State Judicial Academy Controlling Authority Supreme Court High Court Legal Personality Judiciary Duties Justice Administration Public Interest Litigation Guardian of the Constitution Hierarchy of Courts in India 1. Supreme Court 2. High Court 3. Subordinate Courts 4. Executive or Revenue Court Post-Designation Justice Judge of Magistrate, Judicial and Executive Academy Strength 23,790 Judges Strength 34 in Supreme Court, 1,079 for High Court, 22,677 for a Subordinate Court. Selection or Appointment 1. President of India for South Carolina and H.C. Judges as per the recommendations of Collegium. 2. Governor for a subordinate judiciary after passing the Judicial Service Exam Associations All India Judges Association Head of Judiciary Chief Justice of India Justice Nuthalapati of Ramana 48th G. The Indian Judiciary is a system of courts that interpret and apply the law in the Republic of India. It uses a common law system, inherited from the legal system established by former colonial powers and princely states, as well as certain practices from ancient and medieval times. The Indian judicial system is managed and administrated by officers of judicial service, those intended to fill the post of district judge and other civil judicial posts inferior to district judge. Previously, the judicial system included civil service officers. Judges of subordinate judiciaries are appointed by the governor on recommendation by the High Court. Judges of the High Courts and Supreme Court are appointed by the President of India on the recommendation of a collegium. The judicial system of India is classified into three levels with subsidiary parts. The Supreme Court, also known as the Apex Court, is the top court and the last appellate court in India. The Chief Justice of India is its top authority. High courts are the top judicial bodies in the states, controlled and managed by Chief Justices of states. Below the high courts are district courts, also known as subordinate courts that are controlled and managed by the district and sessions judges. The subordinate court system is divided into two parts, the civil court of which a sub-judge is the head followed by the district Munsif court at the lower level, and the criminal court headed by chief judicial slash metropolitan magistrate at top and followed by actum slash ekman jm slash mm at the lower level. The other courts are the executive and revenue courts, which are managed and controlled by the state government through the district magistrate and commissioner, respectively. Although the executive courts are not part of the judiciary, various provisions and judgments empower the high courts and the session judges to inspect or direct the working of executive courts. The Ministry of Law and Justice at the union level is responsible for raising issues before Parliament for the proper functioning of the judiciary. It has complete jurisdiction to deal with the issues of any courts of India, from the Supreme Court to subordinate and executive courts. It also deals with the appointment of judges of the High Courts and the Supreme Court. At the state level, the law departments of the states deal with issues regarding the High Court and the subordinate courts. The Constitution provides for a single unified judiciary in India. The Constitution and the Judiciary The Indian Constitution empowers the judiciary to act as the guardian of the law. There are a number of provisions that deal with the Indian judiciary's role, power, function, and appointment of officers. Under the constitution, the major provisions are, Part 5, Chapter 4, deals with Union Judiciary i.e., Supreme Court, Appointment and Removal, Role and Function. Part 6, Chapter 5, deals with High Court, Appointment and Removal, Role and Function. Part 6, Chapter 6, deals with Subordinate Courts, Appointment and Removal, Role and Function. Article 50, Independence of Judiciary, separates judiciary from executive branch. Other provisions are also under various parts and articles that deals with the court's responsibilities. The judiciary acts as the final arbiter on legal matters. The inner conflict of constitutionalism, judicial review in the basic structure, India's living constitution, constitution, acts as its watchdog by calling for scrutiny any act of the legislature or the executive from overstepping bounds set for them by the constitution. 
It acts as a guardian in protecting the fundamental rights of the people, as enshrined in the constitution, from infringement by any organ of the state. It also balances the conflicting exercise of power between the center and a state or among states, as assigned to them by the constitution. While pronouncing decisions under its constitutional mandate, it is expected to remain unaffected by pulls and pressures exerted by other branches of the state, citizens or interest groups. Independence of the judiciary has been held to be a basic and inalienable feature of the constitution. This independence is reflected in that no minister can suggest a name to the president, who ultimately decides on appointing judges from a list of names recommended by the collegium of the judiciary. Judges of the Supreme Court or High Court also cannot be removed from office once appointed, unless a two-thirds majority of members of any of the houses of the parliament back the move on grounds of proven misconduct or incapacity. A person who has been a judge of a court is disbarred from practicing in the jurisdiction of that court. The judiciary is making efforts to computerize. A courts in India. Appointment. And the parts V or V of the Indian Constitution of India, the President of India appoints judges of the Supreme Court and High Court with the consent of the Chief Justice of India. In practice, certain legal norms are followed in the appointment of judges to the Supreme Court and High Courts. In accordance with the principles set forth in the three judges cases, the President selects judges from a list of names recommended by the Collegium a closed group consisting of the Chief Justice and the most senior judges of the Supreme Court. Prior to the opinions authored in the three judges cases, the President appointed judges upon their recommendation by the Union Cabinet. In 1993, as a result of the second judge's case, the executive was given the power to reject a name recommended by the judiciary. The executive has since faced criticism for its decisions to use or not use this power. Decisions by the Collegium have also been the subject of legal scrutiny. In Mahesh Chandra Gupta vs. Union of India or Oz, the court held that who could become a judge was a matter of fact, and any person therefore had a right to question the court's determination regarding a candidate's qualifications. However, the court also wrote that who should become a judge was a matter of opinion and could not be questioned. As long as a judge's appointment is the subject of a legitimate consultation by the collegium, the content or material it uses to form its opinion cannot be called for scrutiny by a court. In contrast to the historical norms impacting the appointment of judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts, appointments for the subordinate court judges are handled as prescribed under the Constitution and other legal acts and codes. Appointments are generally made by the State Public Service Commission of a particular state. However, in some states, the respective High Court can also appoint judges of subordinate courts. Regardless of the source of the appointment, the process for the appointment of the judge is the same, and is based on the results of a competitive examination. Junior division civil judges may advance to judicial positions in the provincial civil service, while entry-level district judges with at least seven years of experience can complete the higher judicial service exam in order to advance. History The history of jury trials in India dates back to the period of European colonization. In 1665, a petty jury in Madras composed of 12 English and Portuguese jurors acquitted Mrs. Ascensure Dawes, who was on trial for the murder of her enslaved servant. During the period of company rule in India, jury trials within dual court system territories were implemented in Indian territories under East India Company EIC control. In presidency towns such as Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras Crown Courts employed juries to judge European and Indian defendants in criminal cases. Outside of presidency towns, company courts staffed by EIC officials judged both criminal and civil cases without the use of a jury. In 1860, after the British Crown assumed control over the EIC's possessions in India, the Indian Penal Code was adopted. A year later, the Code of Criminal Procedure was adopted. These new regulations stipulated that criminal juries were only mandatory in the high courts of presidency towns, in all other parts of British India, they were optional and rarely utilized. In cases where the defendants were either European or American, at least half of the jury was required to be European or American men, with the justification given that juries in these cases had to be acquainted with the defendant's feelings and dispositions. 
During the 20th century, the jury system in British India came under criticism from both colonial officials and independence activists. The system received no mentions in the 1950 Indian constitution and frequently went unimplemented in many Indian legal jurisdictions after independence in 1947. In 1958, the Law Commission of India recommended its abolition in the 14th report that the commission submitted to the Indian government. Jury trials in India were gradually abolished during the 1960, culminating with the 1973 Criminal Procedure Code, which remains in effect in the 21st century. Evolution of Independent Judiciary The Sapru Committee Report, published in 1945, considered the question of the judiciary in some detail, reiterating what the Government of India Act 1935 had set out, there would be a Federal Court of India which would be the forerunner to the Supreme Court. To separate the judiciary from the executive, the Sapru Committee suggested that judges should have fixed salaries and tenures, and that they could only be removed for gross misbehavior. Judges were to be appointed by the President, in consultation with the CJI. The committee appointed to deal with judicial questions as part of the Constituent Assembly in 1946 was influenced by the Sapru report, though there was concern over the degree of power given to presidential will. Nehru, however, supported the Sapru committee's suggestions. In 1949, Nehru said the Constituent Assembly judges ought to be individuals of the highest integrity, who could stand up against the executive government, and whoever may come in their way. B.R. Ambedkar emphasized the need for judicial independence as well, saying that, there can be no difference of opinion in the House that our judiciary must both be independent of the executive and must also be competent in itself. Finally, the Constitution stated that every judge of the Supreme Court shall be appointed by the President by warrant under his hand and seal after consultation with such of the judges of the Supreme Court and of the High Courts in the states as the President may deem necessary for the purpose, given that, in the case of appointment of a judge other than the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice of India shall always be consulted. Career Progression Judicial officers in India enjoy considerable career mobility. In theory, a low-level officer is able to progress to any higher rank, including the Chief Justice of India. However, to get no judicial officer from a subordinate judiciary has been elevated to this position. Several subordinate officers have, however, been promoted to the rank of Judge of the Supreme Court. 20. A judicial officer will typically begin his or her career as a civil judge in a court of judicial magistrate of first class. Candidates possessing at least seven years of experience practicing in any court of India can be appointed to the post of district judge directly from the Bava A competitive examination. The current age of retirement for Indian judicial officers is just so far why we are in the subordinate district court, Shaitu why we are in the high court and 65 in the Supreme Court. Entry-level judge positions in the courts or judicial magistrate of first class are generally considered probationary or training posts. After completing the probationary assignment, a candidate is posted either as judicial magistrate of first class in the criminal side or in the district months of court for civil appointments. Unlike many Indian Union civil service officer positions, judicial roles are mostly filled positions. In order to allow officers to gain more diverse experience, many deputy posts answering to high judiciary officers have been created for low judiciary officers looking to grow their scope of practice. Officers are not typically placed in these deputy roles during the beginning of their career, but after several years of courtroom experience, they may be appointed to a deputy post as required for career advancement. After at least five years of experience in the junior division, an officer is eligible to be promoted to the rank of civil judge, senior division. In 1809, the first National Pay Commission, NGPC, was created by Supreme Court Justice KJ. Chetty in order to examine the issues of subordinate judiciary and set uniform service conditions for officers looking to progress in their careers. In those suffer exa, the Dusra NJPC was set up to revise the pay or service conditions of subordinate judiciaries with the objective of attracting talent in the judicial service. 
the first NJPC introduced the Assure Career Progression ACP, scheme in order to assure subordinate judicial officers of benefits in the event of delayed career progression. According to the ACP scheme, if an officer's promotion is delayed, FTAs earn of five years of service in their respective grade they are entitled to receive the first stage of the increased ACP pay scale for the next five years. If they are not promoted for another five years, their pay scale under the ACP is increased accordingly. The same methodology is applied at the level of district judge after completing the required days of service in the senior division the high court with the consent of the governor of the respective state. They are promoted to the cadre of entry-level district judge or additional district or session judge as per vacancies. When judges in the rank or DJ are also vested with the administrative power, they are known as principal district or session judges of their respective districts. The officer of junior or senior division under the general control of and subordinate to the district or session judges and also to CJMS. TJS under the general control of their respective high courts. Specific judicial officers are also vested with certain special powers as special judges or magistrates to deal with particular or specific matters regarding their areas of practice, e.g. railway, MPMLA ministers, terrorism, or other specific departments, as needed. Generally, judicial officers who begin their career led as JM Pahla class have a low chance of being promoted into the career of high court judges, but those who generally have a high chance of promotion. Teen Teen PERC entry of High Court Judges positions are filled from the subordinate judiciary. High Court and Supreme Court Judges are constitutional posts and have very strict processes for appointment which take more time and require existing vacancies. However, several judges of the Supreme Court have been promoted from the subordinate judiciary, such as Judge Prafula Chandrapan. Most judicial officers appointed directly from by in the cadre or district judge or in areas of high judicial service have a high probability of promotion to the High Court and potentially to the Supreme Court in the event of vacancy. Various departments and ministries have been created by state and union governments in consultation with their respective High Courts in order to broaden the experience of judicial officers. State government created positions range from under secretary to principal secretary positions. Union ministries include deputy secretary posts, which typically answer to officers in the high and supreme courts. There is also a wide range of temporary deputy posts for officers of certain judicial rankings, which provide similar perks and career allowances to comparable civil servants. Supreme Court of India. The Supreme Court is the highest court of the country established by the Constitution. The Constitution states that the Supreme Court is a federal court, guardian of the Constitution, and the highest court of appeal. Articles 124 to 147 of the Constitution lay down the composition and jurisdiction of the court. Primarily, it is an appellate court which takes up appeals against judgments of the high courts of the states and territories. However, it also takes writ petitions in cases of serious human rights violations or any petition filed under Article 32, which is the right to constitutional remedies, or if a case involves a serious issue that needs immediate resolution. It had its inaugural sitting on the 26th of January 1950, the day India's constitution came into force, and has since delivered more than 24,000 reported judgments. The Supreme Court comprises the Chief Justice and 33 other judges. The proceedings of the Supreme Court are conducted in English only. The Supreme Court rules of 1966 were framed under Article 145 of the Constitution, which exists to regulate the practices and procedures of the Supreme Court. Article 145 has been amended and is presently governed by the Supreme Court rules of 2013, High Courts. There are 27 High Courts at the state level. Article 141 of the Constitution of India mandates that they are bound by the judgments and orders of the Supreme Court of India by precedence. These courts have jurisdiction over a state, a union territory or a group of states and union territories. Below the high courts are a hierarchy of subordinate courts, such as the civil courts, family courts, criminal courts, and various other district courts. High courts were instituted as constitutional courts under Part 6, Chapter 5, Article 214 of the Constitution of India.
the high courts are the principal civil courts of the original jurisdiction in the state, along with the subordinate district courts. However, high courts exercise their original civil and criminal jurisdiction only if subordinate courts in the state are not competent, not authorized by law, to try matters for lack of pecuniary or territorial jurisdiction. High courts may also enjoy original jurisdiction in certain matters, if so designated specifically in a state or federal law. For example, company law cases are instituted only in a high court. However, the primary work of most high courts consists of appeals from lower courts, and writ petitions in terms of Article 226 of the Constitution of India. Writ jurisdiction is also original jurisdiction of the high court. The precise territorial jurisdiction of each high court varies by province. Judges in these courts are appointed by the President after consultation with the Chief Justice of India, Chief Justice of the High Court, and the Governor of the State. The number of judges in a court is decided by dividing the average institution of main cases during the last five years by the national average, or the average rate of disposal of main cases per judge per year in that High Court, whichever is higher. The Calcutta High Court is the oldest High Court in the country, established on the 2nd of July 1862, and the Allahabad High Court is the largest, having a sanctioned strength of 160 judges. High Courts which handle a large number of cases of a particular region have permanent benches or a branch of the court established there. For litigants of remote regions, circuit benches are set up, which work for those days in a month when judges visit. Districts or subordinate courts. The district courts of India are established by the state governments of India for every district or for one or more districts together taking into account the number of cases and population distribution in the district. They administer justice in India at a district level. These courts are under administrative control of the high court of the state to which the district concerned belongs. The decisions of district court are subject to the appellate jurisdiction of the concerned high court. The district court is presided over by one district judge appointed by the governor with the consultation of high court. In addition to the district judge there may be a number of additional district judges and assistant district judges depending on the workload. The additional district judge and the court presiding have equivalent jurisdiction as the district judge and as district court. The district judge is also called a metropolitan session judge when he is presiding over a district court in a city which is designated a metropolitan area by the state government. The district court has appellate jurisdiction over all subordinate courts situated in the district on both civil and criminal matters. Subordinate courts, on the civil side in ascending order, are Junior Civil Judge Court, Principal Junior Civil Judge Court, Senior Civil Judge Court, also called Subcourt. Subordinate courts, on the criminal side, in ascending order, are, Second Class Judicial Magistrate Court, First Class Judicial Magistrate Court, Chief Judicial Magistrate Court. In addition family courts, are established to deal with matrimonial disputes alone. The family court and Mahila court matter deal by the principal judge. The judges appointed to this post from the pool of district judge rank. In few states like Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, it has separate ex cadre post means the judges are not appointed from the continue service, but from the pool of retired judicial officer, either directly or through exam, executive and revenue court. After the judicial hierarchy, the executive hierarchy starts. As per the provision of CR.P.C. It empowers the executive magistrate's court to deal with petty offenses which are even below to the compoundable nature but the power didn't construct that they hold judicial magisterial power in any how. Section 3 of CRPC clearly bifurcated the matter to deal by both magistrate. Section 20 of CRPC empowered the state government to appoint executive magistrates in every metropolitan area and in every district. It has the authority to appoint one of the executive magistrate as the district magistrate and it can appoint any executive magistrate as the additional district magistrate and such magistrate has the same power as enjoyed by the district magistrate under CRPC. If the office of a district magistrate is left vacant then any officer who is succeeding temporarily to the executive administration of the district shall exercise the same power as enjoyed by the district magistrate under CRPC. The state government is empowered to give charge of a subdivision to the executive magistrate. 
the executive magistrate who got the charge of a subdivision shall be called a subdivisional magistrate. The executive magistrate role generally have to maintain law and order under section 107-110, 133, 144, 145, and 147 of the CRPC. Canceling or granting of licensing, land acquisition matter, or any other which state government notify. Section 21 empowers state government to appoint special executive magistrate, SB. EM. Under Section 25 of CRPC, the Commissioner of Police, CP, can also be appointed as Executive Magistrate, but only when the district is declared by state government as Commissionerate. Also important to note down, the DGP of states holds the rank CP, but can't exercise power of EM special until his designation change into CP. The appeal of executive court lies in the court of session judge or additional session judge of the district or to the high court. Order executive court. One district magistrate or ADM or commissioner of police. Two subdivisional magistrate. Three other executive magistrate. Revenue court with the purpose to deal with the land revenue matters. Each state government established a revenue court. These courts adjudicate into matters related to land revenue, matters of tenancy ownership, in a loose sense, boundaries of agricultural land, succession, transfer of land, partition of holding, demarcation of boundaries, removal of encroachments, eviction of trespassers, and in some states, up included, declaratory suits. Order Revenue Court Cadre 1. Board of Revenue IAS plus Higher Judicial Service 2. Dot Principal Revenue Commissioner Indian Administrative Service 3. Divisional or Revenue Commissioner 4. Additional Commissioner IAS or Shash Super Senior 5. Commissioner Land Record 6. Additional Commissioner Land Record 7. Collector 8. Adult Collector 9. Chief Revenue Officer 10. Subdivisional Officer 11. Assistant Collectors 12. Settlement Officer State Administrative Service 13 Assistant Settlement Officer 14 Record Officer 15 Assistant Record Officer 16 Tassildars 17 Additional Tassildars 18 Nayab Tassildars Village Courts Slash Pankayat Slash Rural Court Village Courts Lok Adalat People's Court or Nyea Pankayat Justice of the Villages Compose a system of alternative dispute resolution they were recognized through the 1888 Matters Village Court Act, then developed after 1935 in various provinces and after 1947 Indian states. The model from the Gujarat state with a judge and two assessors was used from the 1970s onwards. In 1984 the Law Commission recommended to create panchayats in rural areas with laymen having educational attainments. The 2008 Gram Nyayalayas Act had foreseen 5,000 mobile courts in the country for judging petty civil property cases and criminal up to two years of prison cases. However, the Act has not been enforced properly, with only 151 functional Gram Nyayalayas in the country as of May 2012 against a target of 5,000 such courts. The major reasons behind the non-enforcement include financial constraints, reluctance of lawyers, police and other government officials, Supreme Court and High Court judges. The payment of the President of India, Vice President, Supreme Court and High Court judges and other constitutional authorities are paid from the Consolidated Fund. There are two separate acts that deal with the pay and condition of judges of South Carolina and H.C. The Supreme Court Judges, Salaries and Condition Act deals with the procedure of pay and all allowances for a Supreme Court judges. Similarly, High Court Judges, Salaries and Condition Act 1954 regulate the pay and all allowances and condition of High Court Judges. Whenever the salary or any condition is amended, the central government must present it like a normal bill before Parliament and follow proper procedures. Subordinate Judiciary National Judicial Pay Commission NJPC is currently the pay commission which decides the uniform pay scale, allowances, facilities, etc. of subordinate judiciaries throughout the country. This commission is set up by the central government when Supreme Court order. Currently the first NJPC is prevailing but the second National Judicial Commission is all set to implementing 2-3 months. The recommendations of NJPC 
when accepted by the Supreme Court after hearing any objection of central or state government, if any, become binding on all states to implement the same accepted. Although it is legal commission, but till now it has not got permanent recognition. The commission is set up when all Indian Judges Association, an association which works for betterment of subordinate judiciaries throughout the country, approach Apex Court for such. However the Chief Justice of India has instructed the central government many times to constitute a permanent body in order to avoid the unnecessary delay in pay scale implementation. History The first NJPC was constituted on the 21st of March 1996 on the order of Supreme Court in the landmark judgment for judicial reform All India Judges Association VOA. The commission was headed by Justice K.J. Shetty, ex-Supreme Court judge and thus known as Shetty Commission. The Commission submitted its report in 1999 which hiked the salary of subordinate judiciary and fixed the pay scale, allowances, facilities, etc. Thereafter nearly 10 years second and JPC set up headed by the PV Reddy, ex-judge South Carolina, Judicial Academies. National Judicial Academy. The 24th of March 2020. Retrieved the 24th of March 2020. The Institute provides training to the officers of subordinate judiciary on topics that state judicial academies do not cover. It also offers training to the high court judges of states and judges and judicial officers of foreign nation. A list of judicial academies follows. Academy National slash State National Judicial Academy Andhra Pradesh Judicial Academy Judicial Academy Assam and Northeastern Judicial Officers Training Institute Najati Bihar Judicial Academy Khattisgarh State Judicial Academy Gujarat State Judicial Academy Kandigarh Judicial Academy Himachal Pradesh Judicial Academy Judicial Academy Jharkhand Karnataka Judicial Academy Kerala Judicial Academy Madhya Pradesh State Judicial Academy Maharashtra Judicial Academy and Indian Media Center and Training Institute Manipur Judicial Academy Meghalaya Judicial Academy Odisha Judicial Academy Rajasthan State Judicial Academy Sakim Judicial Academy Tamil Nadu Judicial Academy Telangana State Judicial Academy Tripura Judicial Academy Judicial Training Institute Uttar Pradesh Uttarakhand Judicial and Legal Academy West Bengal Judicial Academy According to the World Banks, although India's courts are notoriously inefficient, they at least comprise a functioning independent judiciary. A functioning judiciary is the guarantor of fairness and a powerful weapon against corruption. But people's experiences fall far short of this ideal. Corruption in the judiciary goes beyond the bribing of judges. Court personnel are paid off to slow down or speed up a trial, or to make a complaint and go away. Citizens are often unaware of their rights, or resigned, after so many negative experiences, to their fate before an inefficient court. Court efficiency is also crucial, as a serious backlog of cases creates opportunities for demanding unscheduled payments to fast-track a case. Indian judiciary issues have been depicted in several films, one of them being a 2015, Marathi film, Court, Pendency of Cases. Indian courts have millions of pending cases. On an average about 20% of the sanctioned positions for judges are vacant, whereas the annual increase in pendency is less than 2%. If the vacancies were filled, pendencies would go down and make the justice system deliver efficiently. Traffic tickets, police tickets and check bounce cases make up nearly half of all pending cases. In 2015, it was reported that there were close to 400 vacancies for judges posting country's 24 high courts. Arrears in the Supreme Court have mounted to around 65,000. There are some 30 million cases in various courts. Budget allocation for judiciary is a miserly 0.2% of the gross domestic product. The judge population ratio is 10.5 to 1 million, which should be 50 to 1 million. The government has been the largest, single-party litigating before the courts, and has kept adding cases to the overburdened courts despite losing most, and then on losing, has relentlessly taken them to the next court, much of this being avoidable, according to the Law Commission. The vast number of cases pending in the Supreme Court as well as the other lower courts has defeated the very purpose of the judicial system. 
for justice delayed, is in effect justice denied. Judiciary is no longer attracting the best legal talent because of disparity in the income of bright young lawyers and the emoluments of judicial officers. To attract persons of the right caliber to the judicial cadre, system must improve their service conditions, particularly of the trial court judges. In recent years scandals about lack of integrity have smirked the reputation of the judiciary. The subordinate judiciary works in appalling conditions. Any reform undertaken must be in its totality rather than in isolation. On the 12th of January 2012, a Supreme Court bench said that people's faith in judiciary was decreasing at an alarming rate, posing a grave threat to constitutional and democratic governance of the country. It acknowledged some of the serious problems of a large number of vacancies in trial courts, unwillingness of lawyers to become judges, and the failure of the apex judiciary in filling vacant H.C. judges' posts. It wanted to seek answers from the government on Demica's curious suggestion that access to justice must be made a constitutional right and consequently the executive must provide necessary infrastructure for ensuring every citizen enjoyed this right. It also wanted the government of India to detail the work being done by the National Mission for Justice Delivery and Legal Reforms. Under drills outnumber convicts in the prison population of Indian jails. There have been cases where ordinary citizens have been charged for espionage while overstaying their visa or straying across the international land or maritime boundary and languishing in prison for years due to the slow redressal process. To reduce pendency, fast-track courts, evening courts slash morning courts were set up and have met with mixed success so far. Mobile courts are being set up to bring justice at the doorsteps of litigants of far-flung remote and backward rural areas. According to a report released by Centre for Public Policy Research and British Deputy High Commission here are a total of 16,884 commercial disputes pending in high courts with original jurisdiction. Of these Madras High Court tops with 5,865. With the number of commercial disputes growing rapidly, facilitating a seamless dispute resolution system through alternate means has become crucial. A 2020 article by two economists has calculated that the huge pendency of cases costs the Indian economy several percentage points of GDP. The poor state of the judiciary and the huge pendency of cases has also led to increased instances of squatting by tenants refusing to vacate the property rented by them from the property owners. On an average, to get a defaulting tenant evicted in India can take decades, so if a tenant is illegally occupying a property, the property owner essentially has no recourse under the legal system. This has led to increased instances of tenants refusing to vacate premises and then asking for huge sums of money to vacate the place rightfully owned by the property owners. Additional Corruption Corruption is rampant in India's court. According to Transparency International, judicial corruption in India is attributable to factors such as delays in the disposal of cases, shortage of judges and complex procedures all of which are exacerbated by a preponderance of new laws. Most disturbing is the fact that corruption has reached the highest judicial form that is Supreme Court of India. Some notable cases include 1. In April 2017, a judicial magistrate Banjan Ghosh gave bail to a murder accused, and it is alleged that it is unusual unless huge money is involved. 2. In December 2015, the jail strength occupancy at Bagrokat Correction Home and Darjeeling District reduced to its lowest. It was later analyzed that this was due to large number of undeserving acquittals and undeserving bails by then additional Chief J.M. 3. In December 2009, legal activist and Supreme Court lawyer Prashant Bashan stated in court, out of the last 16 to 17 Chief Justices, half have been corrupt. In November 2010, former law minister, Shanti Bashain echoed Prashant Bashain's claim. 4. There have been allegations that judges with doubtful integrity were elevated within the higher judiciary and campaigns held for their impeachment. 5. In November 2011, a former Supreme Court Justice Ruma Pal slammed the higher judiciary for what she called the seven sins. Sins listed as 1. Turning a blind eye to the injudicious conduct of a colleague. 2. 
hypocrisy, the complete distortion of the norm of judicial independence. 3. Secrecy, the fact that no aspect of judicial conduct including the appointment of judges to the High and Supreme Court is transparent. 4. Plagiarism and prolixity, meaning that very often South Carolina judges lift whole passages from earlier decisions by their predecessors and do not acknowledge this, and use long-winded, verbose language. 5. Self-arrogance, wherein the higher judiciary has claimed crass superiority and independence to mask their own indiscipline and transgression of norms and procedures. 6. Professional arrogance, whereby judges do not do their homework and arrive at decisions of grave importance ignoring precedent or judicial principle. 7. Nepotism, wherein favors are sought and dispensed by some judges for gratification of varying manner. 8. In 2011, Somitra Sen, former judge at the Calcutta High Court became the first judge in the India to be impeached by the Rajya Sabha for misappropriation of funds. Courts Mission Mood Project the e-courts project was established in the Edo Safar Safar Panj. According to the project, all the courts including Talu courts will get computerized. As per the project in Edo Safar Safar Ad, all the district courts were initialized under the project. In Edo Safar Ek Safar, all the district courts were computerized. The entry of bug law case has started. The IT department had one system officer and two system assistants in each court. They initiated the services in the Supreme Court in June 2011. The case lists and the judgments of most district courts were available in. Now by and large all the district and taluki courts in the country are computerized. National Judicial Data Grid which gives pendency figures and other relevant information in statistical form. The project also includes producing witnesses through video conferencing. Filing cases, precedents, and all other details will be in computers. Each district court contains one system officer and two system assistants. This technical manpower is involved in training the staff, updating websites. Judicial Service Center. This is a part of a court project. The judicial service centers are available in all court campus. The public as well as the advocates can work in directly and ask for the case status, stage and next hearing dates. This service is provided for free. Law of India, Criminal Law, Substantive Law, Courts or Crime, Judiciary of India, Indian Penal Court, Three Judges Cases, Judge or Judgment, Criminal Procedure, Indian Evidence Act, Government of India, Supreme Court of India, Law Enforcement in India, Civil Procedure Court, Ek No Safarat, Administrative Divisions of India, Code of Criminal Procedure, India, Category, sections of the Indian Penal Court. Thanks for watching this video.